Hi, this is Iris from Mythologica, and today I'm with amazing people who probably made you dance and sing on a festival or two. Uh, please welcome Pyro Mrs. So hi everyone. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Uh, first of all, thank you for taking the time to answer to this interview. Uh, you have a, a really amazing story. Uh, you began as a metal band and you made some stops with folk and punk. Uh, can you tell us more about your story and what led you to travel through this uh, different kind of music? Uh, yeah, well, we met. We started as a band when we were still in high school, so we met a long, long time ago when we were small kids, basically. And yeah, you know, making metal is the cool thing to do, so so you start off trying that. But Plus, we already did that together, so that's it was a, like a logical starting ground. Yeah, I guess, yeah. And But uh, it just turned out that the music that we were writing and that just came out of us was so happy and uh, sort of jolly and all very danceable and was not like so we were all dressed in black long hairs uh, angry faces but we, we made this totally happy music that did not make any sense because actually we didn't even know that folk existed that well yeah we knew of course yeah about some instruments like violin accordion whatever but yeah like a lo we didn't know any folk bands we yeah we were only focused on metal basically when we were younger so it was really strange that we started creating this, this music and that turned out to be folk in the end. Obviously we knew about like bands like uh, NC Ferrum and Flogging Molly, basically folk folk metal, folk punk uh, sort of bands and, the, and we covered songs uh, from those bands at that time as well. But uh, yeah, that, that was probably the, the starting point for the folk aspect of it all. Basically punk and metal bands who were also incorporating folk elements and that's how we sort of started to go down that rabbit hole <laughs> yeah and, and the reason why we went actually more into acoustic stuff is because we we mailed we wanted to play at the festival in the Netherlands it was sort of a folk festival and uh, of course they said okay we don't know you guys we don't have place on on the stage or whatever so you cannot come and play here but we said okay what if we just take our instruments and just play on acoustically on the fields. We've never we never did that before, so it was really a really strange thing. I don't I don't even know why we said that, but yeah, we just sort of bluffed that we could do that, and we went out there with our instruments, um, and we just played folk, and everyone loved it. We had a, a crowd immediately, people gathered around, and um, it was a really strange experience, but it felt very very natural. Yep, yep, that felt right, and we we sort of we were immediately embraced by. Uh, by the sort of Celtic folk music scene that we that we basically stumbled upon, you know? We sort of bluffed our way into a festival, started playing, and then the rest is history, essentially. It was, it was super cool. Yeah, because whenever we played metal in, you know, in like venues with other bands, and um, we, we, we always felt like we were the odd ones out. I mean, yeah, people were listening to us and they were having a good time and people danced. And we were always, of course, having fun, but we never felt as if we really made a connection with the people that were there. But now we've, yeah, now we know that just because we're actually a folk band and uh, on the folk festivals, we, we have this wonderful connection, it really feels like home. So yeah, really cool. agree. So, how did this uh, musical background influence your music now, and what led you to compose and play folk music at the end? So, like, like we said, we, we started off uh, playing uh, metal and, and punk and stuff. And um, that, there's a part of that that we have always kept in our music, which is that we want energy. We want, we want, to, we want to get people to move, get them to dance and, you know, really have, have music sort of be a physical experience, partially. And that's, that, I think, comes from us listening to punk and metal and trying to start off uh, in, in that wheelhouse and that's that's a big influence on the way we write and the way and very much the way we perform we want to sort of get people energized and go and you can still see that we have acoustic instruments we uh, we play acoustically but people have we, we get mosh pits <laughs> and we get walls of death and that's uh, and that's so cool uh, and so, so that's uh, 
that's a big part of our background, I think, and that, that's something you can still feel in our music to, uh, to a big degree. I think also, uh, like, the, 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 the topics that we write about, I mean, we don't write about death or whatever dark things, but we do... Okay, we do have a party songs, of course, about drinking, but also a lot of our songs are more about, like, more heavy topics about uh, finding your own way in life and sort of uh, dealing with uh, personal issues and feeling actually, like you're lost in a storm. We actually even have a song about accepting your own death. Yeah. Which, which is a pretty intense topic when you think about it, but it's like, I don't know. But that's basically basically also the uh, our love for just celtic folk music if you listen to a lot of traditional folk songs there's some heavy yeah. depressing lyrics sometimes man so that's uh the, once we found that out we were like okay we can we can also do that <laughs> so sometimes we uh so so yeah we we sometimes get some uh, get some emotional or some heavy lyrics in there is there any artist uh, who have played a significant influence on you as folk musicians? Yeah, so a few ones that we've already mentioned were like Elveti and, and Flogging Molly, which were obviously more on the heavy side. Uh, but after we kind of found out that folk existed as a genre, we uh, started, well, I wouldn't say worshipping as gods, but we started really admiring, uh, for example, the band Silly Wizard. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> which Scottish folk musicians, um, they were just. I, they've kind of fallen apart now, but they were great. They were just... Yeah, to me, were that's, so... that's pretty much the epitome of Celtic folk. folk yeah, Celtic very folk. skilled. But I think also, now in a folk scene, I look up to a lot of bands on, in the way how they write their own songs. Like, uh, that, that, that they really feel like songs that, that, that sometimes already feel very old, although that they're not traditional. They, some bands write their own songs, but they just feel like so natural. And uh, that's really inspiring for me. Um, uh, yeah, I find that, for example, in the band Plunder that we uh, play a lot with, they I really like their songwriting. Uh, but also bands like like Seeds and, of course, yeah, of course we all know Found, like the big bands that also write their own songs. It's that's really for me really inspiring. It's also crazy to see that um, usually when you hear a band talk about their influences, you you get a list of bands that they listen to since they were a child and that they sort of admire as, as you know rock stars or whatever. But for us, mainly the, the bands that we look up to and the bands that we get a lot of inspiration from, uh, those are the bands that we share the stages with, that we're on festival with. Of course, you what know? you're saying is still partially true as well. Like. Uh, we also get some musical influences from the prog music that you listened to since you were a teenager and, oh, and yes. from the punk music that I listened to since I was a teenager. We still have some of that stuff in, in our music. Of course, yeah. of course, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's cool that we also, we, we learn so much from all these bands around us and it's so cool. How do you manage the collide of all these words? We don't manage that at all, it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Part of it. Part of it is, you know, we, we play what we want to play and we, we play what we think sounds good and what we get uh, enthusiastic about. That's ultimately what, we're, what you're going to hear from us when we, when we record stuff and when we play. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's indeed a lot of different genres blended together and uh, we, we, we don't even understand what we're doing half the time. We just, we just go by ear. <laughs> I remember this this cool website that did a review of our um, uh, of our album Daylight is Fading, and I actually think we didn't post we did not post it on our Facebook because they said something like, "Yeah, these these songs are good and all, but what the hell is this band about? I mean, two songs you're being pirates, and then they're they're sort of a bunch of gypsies and then some some emo <laughs> stuff in the end. What is this? And uh, that's exactly how we how we felt like, oh shit, yeah, man, this album is all over the place again. I mean, it's so many influences and. Yeah, what, what Tim said is really true. We, we try to not make songs like, okay, now we want to make a pirate song and we go and we try to make that. But it's just really like, okay, what do we feel right now? What do we want to play at this moment? And that's really, um, yeah, what, what we're trying to do is not trying to fit into some, some, some predefined genre, but I really. Think, I think an uh, interesting addition to that is that. Uh, uh, our relatively fresh uh, bassist Joshua, which uh, I'm glad to say has been with us for quite some time now, he, he also brings in you know more a, a wider array of musical genres, also influences from funk, for example, 
which oh, is yeah. uh, not something we would have done ourselves. It's really cool to hear in some of our new songs that this funk element is very strong, and it's like it gives a whole new twist to the music that we yeah. make. And and I also want to add, uh, you know, we have a lot of different uh, in- genres and influences in our music, and the the it sometimes it's confusing for for the audience when they find when they find us on the internet or whatever. But the the good thing about it is that we have been uh, able to. Um, to perform on many different festivals and for many different crowds with the same set list. We've been on pagan gatherings, we've been on lots of pirate festivals, we've been on metal festivals, we've been, you know, on all of these different sort of fields and, and scenes. And, uh, you know, part part of our music always manages to find a home somewhere. And uh, we're, we're able to, uh, to discover lots of places and meet lots of people because we have such a wide palette, wide sound palette, and that's something that's I love that. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. It's a positive yeah. thing. Yeah. I found a little video on your YouTube channel uh, with your adventures on uh, Wow, so World of Life Wow. <laughs> It's a blast from the past. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the blast from the past. Yeah, that's quite some time ago. So, is composing for video games is something you have ever think about? I thought um, uh, the the pirate kind uh, from um, uh, Sea of Thieves, for example. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's all, there's so many things I would like to say about this because. Uh, <laughs> Of course, we're all video game nerds. We regularly get together to just play video games, uh, try to take our minds off of band stuff, which works half the time. <laughs> um, uh, Lawrence and I got really addicted to World of Warcraft at some point, both to an unhealthy extent. Uh, um, so yeah, the, the, the World of Warcraft thing was a very personal thing, uh, but also for video games in general, I think we would be open to writing video game music i think it would be cool i think we i think we would all think it would be cool actually yeah but this yeah finding these opportunities is difficult and we've worked now together with uh two streamers from sea of thieves Mm -hmm. one was called the pace that uh we have a song that's called the pace and uh another one we're writing a song for him so it's Mm -hmm. um yeah so some collaborations are starting up but uh yeah we would love to write for video games uh, be great. Yeah. See if Thieves already has some great music in its own. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you're watching Sea of Thieves Makers and you want some really cool crispy folk music, shoot us a message. <laughs> we would absolutely love to work with you. Yeah. Very much. Yes. Yes, but as you said, you can work also with uh, streamers or gamers, uh, with, which works with uh, that kind of game. It will be cool too. Yeah. yeah. What about your creative process? Is it something uh, mutual, a mutual proposal, or there is uh, somebody precise uh, who composed in uh, the band? It's both at the same time, right, guys? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind uh, of, yeah. Yeah, we really work together a lot, but there's almost always one guy that has an initial idea and a sort of like a vision for the song. Okay, this is the direction to go to, because else we just get in the room and we just get frustrated because everyone is throwing ideas at, uh, at each other and it doesn't really it doesn't have like this uh, yeah, direction so to say yeah so yeah definitely all we all write we all contribute to the songs and, and it's all it's a dynamic process as well right so at one point some person can have a, an, a, an idea of where a song is supposed to go but then during the writing process someone else might have an idea that connects better with the rest of the band and then we just go for that yeah. Yeah. After after a fight, of course. Yeah. After a few <laughs> scuffles. Yeah. Or, or, or not. Sometimes it's harmonious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and so also, uh, all the good uh, lyrics are written by Tim. So yeah. Tim uh, writes. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I do, he studied for it. So. I do my best. Yeah. No, but it, indeed, usually one person starts with a, a clear idea, or like, okay, I have an idea for a song, and this is sort of what I had in mind. But then we all work together uh, to. Uh, and then we put ideas back and forth, and then we have an end result after hours in the in the rehearsal space. Yeah, and no, it's I... not always an end result. I mean, there are several <laughs> cases of songs that we ended up rewriting after several years, not entirely, just yeah, yeah. That's 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 like the thing about us as, as 
the thing about us as well. We 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 are always under construction, and uh, we are always yeah. once once you play a song for months or years, you start, you learn more and more about it. Even though it's on an album somewhere and you released yeah. it, sometimes you discover more and more about it, and you can sort of make changes. And we're we're always open to that. And, yeah, uh, and I think what's also very special about the songwriting process is that we have these melodies that sometimes lay around. It just in the back of our minds for years. Yeah. We have songs that uh, the melody started, I think, three years ago, and then uh, yeah, we just loved and it sticks. So if if we know it sticks in our mind for three years, then it must be some something good. But you want to find the night, yeah, well, the rest of the song as well. Yeah. <laughs> and it takes years really for us because yeah, maybe we're not really structured songwriting songwriters, but um, yeah, I also like this process a lot. But, we, we keep these old uh, puzzle pieces from, from way back and then suddenly it's a new song and then we're super hyped. Yeah, yeah. but it's not, it's, it, I mean the inverse things happen sometimes as well, like with some, we've had some songs that just wrote themselves in like half an afternoon. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah those are the magic, the magic afternoons, absolutely. Yeah. If you work uh, one song by one song, or uh, it can be uh, several songs together, Usually, it's uh, we'll work we'll work on uh, a couple of songs uh, yeah, simultaneously. Was... Yeah, whatever whatever ideas are uh, freshest in our minds and whatever we're most excited about, that, those are the ones that we'll end up working on and spending yeah. lots of time with. Yeah, yeah. There's never a plan, basically, and it's also <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, we're a chaotic bunch, but it's also I think really nice to be able to go with the flow that's currently there sometimes we are almost finished with the song and then in a, in the rehearsal space someone just i don't know comes up with something totally new and we, we go with that song it's just yeah yeah it's I very think, much a gut feeling thing. Yeah, well it's uh yeah uh, stupidly chaotic actually but <laughs> <laughs> you, you can say it's a gut feeling and then, then it's positive but yeah we're chaotic <laughs> We're, we're just dogs chasing cars, and if there's a new shiny car coming around the corner, we'll just be like, "Oh, what's that?" And then we'll... Yeah. <laughs> but but, but the, main, the main th the main thing about it, though, the the main uh, constant thing about our songwriting is that we run fast. We chase ideas, and we run fast, and uh, we just we just want that good song. We just want that thing that we get so excited about. Like, oh man, I can't wait to record this and play this live. Like, that's that's the feeling that we that that keeps us going. Essentially. Yeah, that's that's the car that we're chasing, right? Like. Yeah. And it works already because you have uh, now three albums available and you recently released a new uh, IP in uh, 2020. So why do you choose this format? Not a, a full-length album, but an EP. So the, the new EP is, um, is full of songs that we wrote uh, years and years and years ago in, uh, in, our, in our metal days. <laughs> that, we, that we talked about. We had, um, uh, yeah, we had those songs that we played at the time, and uh, we still play those. But now we have uh, different instruments in our hands, and we have a different lineup, and uh, it's a, it's a completely different sound. But so, but we we we've always loved those songs, and we always said, oh man, we should we should re-record those songs, but in our current lineup, so, to sort of uh, yeah. really really give it the representation of how we play them now. So that idea for an EP with those old songs that we still play from that era, we, we had that plan for years, I think, um, yeah. just to sort of yeah, get those out us, there. For us, then it doesn't really uh, feel fair to put it on a, on a, on a full-length album because well, the, a lot of our people already know these songs because we've been playing them forever. So that's why, and also, of course, in the lockdown, uh, yeah, we had so suddenly some time on our hands. So actually, it was it was yeah we it was in the back of the minds again. We had this plan for years, and now suddenly to uh, uh, a bit of time left. And okay, let, let us go to the studio now, record these things, and uh, yeah, keep on working on a full length album like more, more secretly. And yeah, yeah, that's yeah, why it's 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 an EP. We wouldn't have made it without COVID because we would have just been on tour all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how was and, the yeah. writing and the recording process? The writing was easy. We already wrote it. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Well, we, so, we, add, we, we added. Some songs. Yeah, we added some extra songs, and uh, those also, yeah, they came together pretty harmoniously. I feel like I, I, I did not, I did not for a moment feel like we were writing an EP. It was just sort of there, and. Uh, 
Yeah, it was pretty easy. <laughs> yeah, and so... Of those half afternoon songs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah oh, indeed. Yeah. Not a song. <laughs> but of course, so when we made the switch from more like metal, electric instruments to, to folk, a lot of songs didn't translate really well. They, yeah, I mean, they were metal songs or whatever. They did, didn't go with the folk instrument. But these songs, yeah, we of course rewrote them a bit to make them uh, fit for the acoustic instruments and still be a worthy song. Uh, so that was sort of yeah the most writing that we did for this EP, and the recording process for us was it was very important that it sort of felt a really acoustic like uh, something you would hear in a pub, because the songs are really um, yeah sort of uh, old party yeah party songs basically. Uh, so we so we went to into a, stu- a studio that we know is uh, more like a uh, like an old school analog sort of acoustic uh, vibe. Um, yeah, and, and we wanted to translate this really um, live acoustic sound. But I, I think I think it's, it went went really really nicely. It really sounds really acoustic and really sort of uh, yeah, it's it's nice, but it's also raw and it's really like alive. One of the and things I, that we uh, that we did to sort of get that uh, to sort of capture that feeling was uh, we recorded a lot of uh, our parts at the same time. So Stan was in the drum room, I was, uh, you know, behind a piece of glass uh, with my bazooki jamming with him, and Joshua was, uh, yeah. you know, a couple of meters next to me because of COVID. Um, also, ja- and, and we were jamming as a rhythm section together and get that all together in one take to sort of really get a, a sort of live, jammy, uh, you know, feel to it. And uh, also, because it same it saves time in the studio because you don't have to do everything separately. That was also nice. Yeah, but but, uh, it, but that's that that's that's what we went for, just to sort of yeah. get get a get a very organic uh, vibe that's the word, going. Yeah. yeah. Is there um, really a difference from uh, recording, uh, as you said, uh, in a um, in, in this organic way uh, instead of uh, recording one by one? Uh, the energy is uh, is the thing or not? Yeah, massively. Yeah, it's, wow, yeah, but so so we didn't really know actually what it means to really record an album until we recorded "Daylight Is Fading," and this was uh, done with Fika. She is um, an amazing producer. She's so good, and yeah, she made us. She she asked us all these questions about things we never thought about, like okay, how do you want these? your instruments to sound, say they actually, how, how, yeah, how do you want it to sound? And I'm like, holy shit, how can we even know this? But, um, yeah, so with her, we really sat down, okay, we're going to create an album uh, sound. We're going to create layer by layer, we're going to make this, um, yeah, per, per, basically perfect sound. Uh, and it's so well thought through and it's, uh, yeah, really well done. Uh, she did an amazing job. Um, so that was completely different from going for a very organic feel, and um, yeah, both is really great. Both are great experiences, but yeah, it was totally different, I guess. Not sure if you guys want to add more. No, I think a cool thing I like personally about the, the recording it together is like, like Tim said, with the rhythm section, we could just groove together. We could just do all the non-verbal communication that you would have on stage it was also in the studio. And that's so massively different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. But then again, if if you really layered everything, you can you you hear everything so precisely. You, you records, yeah, it's just the highest quality, of course. Yeah. And yeah, I think that's also very nice because, of, of course, an album is different from a live gig. You for an album, you need to be able to listen to it again and again and again, and nothing has to annoy you. Everything has to be nice and. Even after 100 times, you still don't. Yeah, there shouldn't be any mistakes or whatever. It should just be perfect. And yeah, Fika helped us really well with that. It was great. There's going to be one mistake on the album, and and you know it's there, and your family is just going to run the CD for everyone that comes by. Oh, you die inside. <laughs> <laughs> yep. What's your best memory on stage? Because um. Uh... Because of the lockdown, we have to dream a little. So, oh. what's your best memory of this stage? I think it's going to be a different one for each, all three of us. Ah, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, so, so for me, 
Yeah, who, who goes first, man? Yeah, you, you have a clear okay, one. Yeah, yeah I have so a clear one. one. So it was on Castle Fest uh, the first time when we had to the honor basically to uh, to be the closing act. And this uh, the closing act plays on the campsite, so it's only for like the diehard people that are still there on the Sunday night. And they, and, and yeah, we thought, okay, no one is going to be here because they have to be at work on Monday morning, and it's just gonna be very awkward because I don't know, maybe five people show up, and there no, won't be any vibe. But well, I, that was completely uh, <laughs> misjudgment because it was completely packed. The tent was completely full, and everyone was just giving it their all because it was the last party. Yeah, basically for the entire year, because the Castle Fest would only come next year again. So it was um, an insane party um, there on Castle Fest with such an amazing uh, crowd, and it was really amazing. Uh, that, that's my best memory on stage, uh, because also something very strange happened at some point. The sound guy, he turned off the, the volume, the, the, like the, the front of house, so there was no sound anymore. Uh, it turned out he didn't get uh, his beer. <laughs> he wanted to drink some beers. <laughs> but yeah, we are we are of course an acoustic band, so we just sat to the entire uh, yeah all the people. I don't know, was completely packed. Okay, guys, just be a bit quiet. We continue acoustically, right? So and everyone started to sit down, and it was re re really quiet, and we played these songs, and then yeah, this got a, a very magical moment where yeah we suddenly continued uh, acoustically, and everyone was loving it. I think yeah, it's great. That's mine, guys, and yours. Mine is going to be um, maybe something you wouldn't expect. It was when we played on the main stage of Keltfest. Um, and I remember that the sun was shining onto the stage. And it was really hot that day. I was barefooted, and I have a metal kick drum pedal. <laughs> and we played that gig for about 45 minutes, I think. My foot was on the pedal the whole time. I burnt my foot, but I didn't notice it because the gig was so cool. I only noticed it when I got when we got up to do the bow. I felt like, oh shit, my foot's entirely burnt. <laughs> so, and I walked around with a burnt foot for the rest of the day. <laughs> I I remember that gig. That was a pretty good one. That was uh, yeah. that was great. Yeah, I think uh, my my favorite uh, gig memory went over to the UK for the first time um, where and I remember it, it, it was uh, it was not because we played really well that that gig we, we played all right but I, I just remember the feeling we, we we went to the UK for the first time we sat in our car for hours on end it was a long drive and then when we got there and we played our show I was like oh my god we're, we're a touring band we're like Somebody really doing so this real. for real and there are people overseas jamming to our music and we're just we're just communicating through our music and it was it was such a surreal experience to do that for the first time and to really feel like oh man this this we're i'm really living living this music and uh, yeah that was a uh, that that to me was a really special uh, special moment all good vibes <laughs> is your food better now <laughs> oh yeah i've lost several toenails in the meantime my foot gets the worst it's, well you know it's we, fine. We, we all we always play uh barefooted you know we never have shoes on or socks on or anything so a lot a lot of nasty shit has happened to all of our feet during gigs <laughs> yeah i can imagine <laughs> Then you also participated to the Castle Fest Collective album. Yep. Uh, what this experience brings to you? It was uh, it was such a good feeling to um, still have to still be uh, alive and active as a musician in these in these crazy times. So it's uh, I really I really value uh, that uh, that aspect of it that we sort of came together through the internet and created something. And uh, sort of stayed stayed alive and uh, kept our sanity in this in this lockdown. It was it was really special. Yeah. So for me, I I I also just realized like there are so many ways to write a song. I learned so much about songwriting from that. And um, yeah, I also mentioned this before, but I really respect a lot of uh, uh, the musicians in the in the folk scene that I now yeah that were actually also on that record. Uh, like how they write their parts, how they structure songs, how they do all these things, and that was, for me, yeah, I felt very honored to be able to contribute to that. And 
Um, yeah, the Steppy from Pakelt, he mixed, and Master, I think he did it amazingly also. Oh, oh, absolutely. And he just made from all these, yeah, sort of random bits and pieces from everyone, he, ma he made real songs that really feel, yeah, that, yeah, sort of to feel like, they feel like natural songs. It doesn't feel like there are 600 people crammed into a song, it's just, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I, it, I, I was it, so it, surprised. It feels like all of those musicians actually came together in the same studio, exactly. even, even uh, though like, you're listening to home recordings, you know, that came from all around Europe. It's, yeah. it's brilliant. Yeah, it's good. And yeah, so for, for me, the, I enjoyed learning so much about songwriting. That was really great. So to end, because we have to at a moment, <laughs> what's your plan for the future? Well, we're gonna we're gonna write more songs. Um, we're gonna you know keep doing our thing, and we are, oh my god, we are dying to get digging again. That's just what that's just what we want to do ultimately is to just play shows. So yeah. Our our plan, uh, but it's more it's more of a wish than a plan, is to just be on tour again. We are very busy writing songs now, and I think, uh, yeah, plans for the future is just for me just to write songs that really matter, that they really they really sort of make you get up in the morning and, and dance or whatever time and day you want to dance. That's really my my wish for the future, and then uh, yeah, just see where it takes us. Just be yeah, just. Follow these songs, basically. They, the songs go lead a life, and you follow and hopefully play around wherever you can. That would be yeah. great. And I think it would also be nice if we can like continue to keep learning from all these awesome people that we meet all over the place. And we're we're going to meet a lot more because we're going to be playing in more countries even than we've already done. And I don't know. I like just meeting these cool people and learning from them and and playing on stages together and stuff. And I also hope that we can still stand each other's presence after touring together for so long <laughs> that would yeah. be nice that would be a nice yeah. bonus yeah. we wanna we wanna you know get get the music a lot make it come alive for for us personally and uh, just you know in play it in the physical world for people that's that's what that's what we're about and uh, this lockdown can't end soon enough because that's what we want to do <laughs> yeah. where can we find and support you so we're on we're on social media, Instagram at Pyrolysis Band, Facebook Pyrolysis. Uh, we have a YouTube channel, Pyrolysis Music is I think how you spell it, uh, with all sorts of cool videos uh, and uh, World of Warcraft videos, but also some <laughs> I think le cool less videos. Do less less dodgy <laughs> videos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but so the the main the, I mean we feel very very supportive if people just write our uh, spell our name correctly. That's yeah. the best way you can support us. Yeah. So uh, get yeah. our names out and, uh, and just, uh, yeah, I knew, we have picked a difficult name and I'm still very sorry for that. But uh, the best way to support us is just to know our name, of course. That is, uh, and just a sign of great dedication if people can spell our name correctly. Yeah. And, and, and just listen. I mean, I, I went all please like, comment, subscribe on you guys, but that's uh, ultimately we just want to, we just want people to hear our music. and. Yeah, you know, just just listen to it. It's it's on the internet. You know where to find it. Please just or, or download it illegally. Yeah, don't, don't just care. Go. Just yes, just no, listen to so it. As long as you have fun, that's why we do. Yeah, it. exactly, exactly. Uh, thank you guys. Uh, it was really a nice uh, a nice moment. Moment. I hope you enjoyed this interview. Oh, this thank you. Great. Thank yeah. you so much. Had a good time. Yeah, for sure. In the future. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.